Well folks it's totally awesome fishing time again and here I am in the totally awesome tackle shack. As you can see lots of goodies on the wall lots of old bits of tackle as well. Going to get more in there as I go along. Now I was going to film in here but the sun is going down it's late afternoon it's very very glary and this little camera doesn't hold it up too well in contrast so I'm going to be talking about these guys spinning rods that are all the rage at the moment for going for blue sharks and other sharks as well so it's all the rage just a spinning rod like this but they have a multitude of other uses as well and in fact we call them spinning rods whereas in fact this one is a popping up what they call a popping rod it's so throwing a big heavy lure out for tuna, uh, giant carambisi, which are GTs, and popping it across the surface of carambisi. I'm calling it carambisi because I used to do a lot of fishing in Kenya years ago. Carambisi is in fact the GT or giant valley jack, possibly the most hard fighting jack species of that, uh, that type of fish you can catch. Big two. Nice big chunky reel. I just felt we've used these for years. We've had these a few years now. Me and Mike messed around with them. Uh, we don't do the uh, GT fishing uh, now, so I thought, what else can I use it for? You know, you've got a popping rod. Well, it's marketed for that, but uh, you can use it up tiding, or use it beach fishing, or use it boat fishing, and it suddenly occurred to me, there could be a sort of a rod here that might double up and save a lot of beginners or anything like that, newcomers, money, and in fact you don't buy a beach rod, a boat rod, a this rod, a that rod, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah, they're not cheap rods, but they're not expensive either, really. Get one decent rod that might double up and do other stuff, because when you think about it, a lot of the time I catch loads of fish on my Avon rod, freshwater fish, and I catch, you know, carp, pike. I mean, the biggest pike I've had on the Avon rod was, I think it was 26 and a quarter pounds on a worm fishing for sea trout. So a 26 and a quarter pound pike on a, on a rod that's not called a pike rod. Do you see what I mean? It's that type of thing. Rod is just basically something to cast with and something to pressure the fish in with. And it's really like a spring. It's cushioning the fish. But I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to go inside. There's more even lighting in there and I won't get quite so echoey sound. So let's get these rods into um, the tackle office. Totally awesome tackle office. We do it in there and I've got a present for my son Michael that we need to unbox. So people, in here, much better, cooler, cup of tea. Right, with all the rage going for multiplier reels on top of the rods, fading as it were, and the late, well it's not the latest fashion, listen, I was catching hammerheads on fixed spools and spinning reels 25 years ago. No big deal in America, they do it all the time. But over here in the last, I want to say five, six years, seem to be a rise in popularity of using a fixed spool, i.e. one of these, and a spinning rod, which in this case is a, a poppy rod, much shorter, uh, you know, than freshwater, say, carp rods. And they're for casting, as I say, surface poppers for big game fish, really, that's what they're for. They use them bass fishing and, uh, and stuff now, but you can also surprise yourself as to exactly how hard you can pull and fight a fish with these. So, I'm going to tell you what this one is. There, you can see it there. Look, people, we're not selling them. Me and Mike have had these between bouncing them backwards and forwards between us for ages. I've had them down St. Aldi's Bay, I've had them out in a boat, I've had a fish around with them. Second one is a new era as well, but I like this one. It's very, look, very, very, very light. This comes with a casting weight of 150 grams, right? But it's got a rod class, and I don't know what that means. Is that an IGFA? line class rating I don't know 50 to 70 pounds maybe it means 50 to 75 uh, to 70 pound line can go on it well hang on I can put 20 pound line on it or I can put 100 pound braid on it can't I so I'm not quite sure what that's about this is called a popping special so SW150 uh, same it's, it's designed for popping big lures you can use it for anything guys um, a nice even regular curve on this one again They've all got really pretty nice guides on them. They've got a nice finish for all those tackle tarts among you who love immaculate rings and don't have chipped and scratched rods like I do. I've got to call it like Hyperlon or Duplon. They have, um, you know, the materials they use now. Screw winch fit in there. And again, this one I've worked quite a lot with some heavy weights off the beach. I leave my bits of plastic on there, they're covering, because at the end of the day, if I'm baiting up, I tend to have the hook in my right hand, graunching the bait on with my left, so that's Muck City, 
and it goes all over the rod butt. So yes, you can cut this off. I leave it on till it wears off. So this one will cast a bit away. The other one they do is called a stick special SW120 for pencils. Well, pencils you can you can. You, I never know whether to try and specify an individual lure. It's a pencil rod. It casts lures. It can cast bait. It can cast leads. But what else does it say on it? It's got a rod class of 40 to 55 pounds. I don't know what rod class means. Does it mean line class? It may break in strain of line. Casting weight 120 grams. But wait for this. Longer, 8 feet 10, 2.7 meters. PE4, which sort of means nothing to me. So, and then a load of gobbledygook on the other side. Who knows? Anyhow, I like the extra length of this one. It's got a good length, same sort of good guide. All these Namura rods have got really good finish, they are a nice rod, yeah, there's no question about that. Now, for travelling anglers, these break at the rod butt. If you shut them in the car boot, you can break them anywhere you want. But they come apart there with a the ferrule going into the rod butt. Okay, so that's quite handy, this one to be the same. Just twist, look. So they break down to a nice short not a travel rod, it's not a four piece, but you've got a, a full blank section and a casting butt reel section if you want, if you like it like that. So I thought I don't I don't know. I've cast, I've fished, I've caught fish with them. What do they pull? So it's nothing to do with the line cross, nothing whatsoever. How much power have they got? Okay. So I go outside by the tackle shack, I put the balance on the floor, tie it off, zero it get wifey to come out and I put the maximum curve on it that I would put pulling on a fish and I mean the maximum curve using on any of these three rods say 30 pound line I'd be pushed to break 30 pound line I wouldn't break it with a fishing rod by all means try it but don't blame me but um, most of the time you'd be shocked at how little you are pulling in fact <clears throat> for all the superheroes out there that are into tackle big time you know how to set a real drag we did how much line we've done all those videos how much do you pull with a fishing rod how to alter and increase uh, the compression of the blank and get extra power through the line through the line and we got those up there search those out they're in our playlist what i am talking about is how hard you're pulling with a fishing rod under pressure with whatever drag you want to put on there you know you might fish a lot of drag this thing takes drag power it says here this reel takes a drag power of 30 kilos. So that's 66 pounds of drag. Painfully obvious, the rod won't take it, would it? Most rods won't, um, unless you keep it really low. Because what happens is the glass goes oval and it narrows and then bang it or crack. Well, it won't crack, it'll explode. So, you know, again, 30 kilos of drag. I don't think I'd be fishing with that. Nice to have it as a backup. But you don't need it. So how hard was I pulling? So I go out with a uh, spring balance and put as much maximum pressure as I felt happy with, right? So the basic one, which I did like, and I was fishing with Wayne on his boat yesterday, messing around with it. This one is the IC Surface Popper SW 100 gram casting weight, 2.28 meters long in English, real language, seven feet six long. I like this one. I do like this one. It like balances well, and it takes some big fish as well. I pulled 80 pounds, 70 pounds, 50 pounds, maxing the rod, I mean really maxing the rod, it's walloped over. Now oh, come on Graham, you must have pulled 20 pounds with it, I wish. Between 7 and 8 pounds. So that's how little you are applying pressure to a fish. Next one up, the blue one, which is lighter, to me it feels lighter, you know, it feels, I say better balanced, but a softer action, I'm going to say through that one, a softer action. I maxed that one over and it varied a little bit depending on whether I took one pace back and took, made the circular blank go oval for the increase in pressure. So if I had an acute bend like this, six pounds, if I took one step back and lowered that angle of pressure, so I took the power out of that over ovality, that's a new word. I made it like that, so I'm coming back on the rod, you increase the power considerably up to seven pounds, but it's still not like 30 pounds, is it? 30 pounds of drag and all that. And of course, 30 pounds of drag is, you put it on 30 pounds, but when it's running, the smaller the spool gets, 
the more increase in the diameter, the more drag, and you don't know that, and there's no way of measuring it unless you stop, cut the line and pull and all that business. Trust me, I've measured it up, it's on our site. How to set a real drag. Oh, someone's going to copy that one, aren't they? We know that. Okay, finally, the one that seems chunky, and I think that's because it's longer. That's the uh, stick special, the orange rod, as I called it. I said, Mark, pipe. I said, it might pass me the orange rod or the blue rod. So I have my rods color coded. I don't know. It's an SW3 carbon 950 stroke carburetor filled premium magnesium. Can you pass me that rod? No, no, I'm not one of those guys. I'll go uh, uh, throw the black one over, Mike. Uh, Oh wait, give us that blue rod. I'm one of those, I'm afraid. So the orange one, pulled between seven and seven and a half pounds. So that was even going on an acute tip and stepping back and lowering the tip, changing the ovality of the rod blank. You'd think it would have an increase, but no, it's almost like it's softer all the way through, more forgiving, and I believe that's because of the length. So I think the shorter rods probably are a bit stiff, a bit more power, different made blank, and the longer one, it's going to cut, still cast lures if you want to cast lures, leads and stuff like that. I feel that one is a bit more forgiving. So there you go, between seven and seven and a half pounds. Now, Mike brought me up a present. Yes, he did indeed. He did indeed bring me a present because he's fed up seeing my cool box, the little blue thing, little sad blue thing I, that I still use. I put my bait in and wash it out and put my sandwiches in. And on a really bad day, I put the bait in with the sandwiches or the sandwiches in with a bait. And it's made by Petromax. Petromax is a company that Mike knows about from camping stuff, you know, outdoor stuff. I'll tell you what, man, this thing is bulletproof. Let's check it out. Now this thing is unbelievably, it's heavy, it's solid, it's hard. It's Petromax, it's a German make, and as most people would appreciate, the Germans make really good, really good quality stuff. So it's got two rubber, tags here so it's for keeping things really cold for a long time not just five hours in a boat and this one Mike's got me for going in the boat well we've got to get the temperature to get uh, this in the boat but it makes look it can make a great seat it's solid it's so solid it's ridiculous it's got with it because it's, it's got I want to call it like a permanent structure you're going to use it camping in a car, in a truck, in an estate, in a SUV, on the tailgate of the SUV. So, as you can see in there, a load of space, but it's got the drain plug around the side, okay? It's got tie downs there, it's got additional, I think it's additional tie down brackets, so you can have extra brackets on there, right? And you can strap it down either, on, I guess, on your front of the car, the back of a car, truck, a boat, or wherever. So if you're moving around, you put it there, it's fixed. It's got a locking system as well that you can fit to have a lock on it. It says in case people want to steal your food, that's going to be pretty low, isn't it, if they want to steal your food. I'm going to say this one, this one might be almost, almost bear-proof. Has anybody out there used one of these Petro Max ones? Because I've been over in Vancouver Island, and I've seen, we used to camp over there, uh, fishing for the halibut and the salmon on the west coast, a place called Banfield. And one night they came around with the guns and said, guys, you know, you better stay in your trailers and stuff. Uh, there's been a black bear around. May I tell this story before? I don't know if I tell it again. Anyway, Mr. Black Bear came around the next day and they said, they didn't shoot him last night, but it's dangerous because he had to go at somebody in the tent. And he's ripped open all the waste trash cans. He even ripped someone's cooler open. I mean, ripped it open and just crushed all the, got wine. How did they, how did they not tear all their mouth to pieces? I don't know. Steel cans ripped apart. I saw it with my own eyes, torn apart totally. I'm not sure they tear this apart. I reckon they would, you know, they're, they're, that, they're that tough. It's got a drain plug around here. So you can empty out and drain any surplus water as it dissolves from ice. But what you do is, you get the, I've read it up, you get the temperature down really low first. You have to chill this because this is very, very thick insulation here. All around here is, is from, I can't describe it, I'm going to say it's a couple of inches thick here, and that must be the insulation material inside. Okay, you've got trays in there, they just fit like that, so you can separate your food items. Now, this one 
I'm going to be using it on a day basis in the boat, but if I'm doing an overnight in the boat, obviously, in the hot weather, I can keep stuff really cool here. They reckon you can chill stuff and keep it cold in here. Wait for this, if you get it cold enough, for 12 days, just with minimal opening. So it's for long-term camping, I'm going to say, that's what it's for. On a boat, most people don't. If, it, if you're day boating, you know, you go in, you're still going to put ice in there. This one really is not for fish. Put a few fish in there because you can use these grills, put the fish in the bottom, ice, and then keep your, well, beers in one and food in the other, sandwiches in there. All these look like they're stainless, they come with locks and everything. I mean, real good classy kit, but you, most people are not going to be taking it on an average in a car. It's for if you're going on a sort of an expedition, but it came with something else which Mike's brought in. And when I say this is bulletproof, I mean, it really is bulletproof. Don't panic people, it's only the air in the air rifle. It's a joke, a little whim. Let's check the box out. It comes with this, which Mike said, you'll like that bit down for your boat. Just gotta get a knife and cut it out. Uh, that's a knife. No mate, this is a knife. Nothing like, nothing like an unboxing, which for me, as you guys know, is very rare. A hell of a lot of rain. Oh my god, oh my god, what is this? Let's get rid of the box. Oh, oh please, please, not an instruction manual, no. Not one of those put together things. This might put a whole different complexion on call boxes because it looks like it turns into a seat or something. This is the seat cushion. How big is that? If that's a seat cushion, what's this bit? Ah, oh, I know what it is. I can see, folks, the two sizes because Mike has got the larger size because he goes outdoors and he had put the bigger cooler on the back of his uh, Land Rover. So this is a seat cushion for the KX50. Bye. This is the seat cushion, which is really, really thick. Now I can see that could be dead handy on the boat as a pad as well. And they give you these screws there, which you must put into the side, and they must marry up with these poppers. So those go to Mike, for the big KX50 and these ones are going to fit on there. I shall come back in a short time. apparent now on goes this lovely cushion and that must go straight on those poppers there yes sir -y. this is definitely a quality piece of equipment that stretches across there goes on there now you can take this off obviously, if I'm in my boat now, I can actually just go pop, 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 take it off, put it in the cabin out of the way, wash all this down, so I know I'll be putting bait in it sooner or later, and there you go. That's what it looks like guys, these are extra brackets that can go 
for tie downs and stuff like that. So, something totally different for you. Look, people, it's classy, it's heavy, it's unbelievably like bomb proof. It's not something that you're going to just carry and lug around with you. You're going to fill it up with your food. If you're going away on a two or three day expedition, whether it's camping, whether you're doing a, a tear outdoors bushcraft thing or something like that, you can, you can go and survive on squirrels and bird droppings if you want, or you can have the backup of this with some decent grub in it and you can keep the food longer. There you go. That's a small size. Well, there you go, guys. There's a little bit of interest for you there. Might get you thinking. So, don't forget, subscribe button, both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. Hit the notification bell because I'm pumping films up like crazy at the moment. If you don't hit the bell, you will never know when the films go up. Most of the time, I don't know myself. It's just when I fancy doing them. All I've got to do now is work out how I put a rod gimbal onto this lovely stool here, padded and fight the fish from this position. We'll see you guys next time. Fish on! Fish on! Right rigger! Left rigger! Flatline, man!